pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Good morning, SFX! Happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope you are all having a great start to your week. I want to let everyone know, just as a kind reminder, that to truly be open to growth and to continue to be builders, we need to remember that our mask wearing, our distancing, and our hand washing needs to be a high priority at all times. Good morning, times. St. Francis visitors. My name is Lisa Appleby. I'm the admissions director at St. Francis. I will be taking you on a tour today of St. Francis. Unfortunately, we need to do it virtually um, due to all of our children being back on campus, which we're thrilled about. Um, I would like to start by explaining the Pledge and Prayer, which traditionally takes place up here. It's a long-standing tradition. Um, it goes back to, I have a 26 and 27 year old, it goes way back to when they were here at St. Francis. It's something that we do every morning. It's how we start each day. Our principal, in conjunction with our student council representatives, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. After that, we do announcements, which can be anything from a skit to a song, if we're doing a musical, to our mascot, the wolf, coming out and, and showing us all some spirit, getting us all revved up, ready to go for the day. And finally, we end with prayer kind of a prayer slash reflection. Um, something to think about for the day, something to work on, something to contemplate. Um, our parents are always welcome to come to Pledge and Prayer. Uh, traditionally, they stand in the cement area outside here. Uh, right now we are doing Pledge and Prayer virtually, but it's such a long standing tradition that that is something that will take place every single morning come rain or shine. Here I am in St. Francis Xavier Library. In our library, there's a multitude of things that take place. We have an area in the library where parents association meetings, school board meetings, that sort of thing take place. Sometimes our grade levels come in here if they have an event like a puppet show or what have you. Um, the library, all of our bookshelves are on wheels um, so that when we do have events, we can transform the library into any type of space depending upon what's going on. In our library, we also have what used to be a tech lab that down the road is going to be transformed into our new robotics area, which we're really excited about. We have also a very tiny, small classroom in the back corner of the library where we have a reading coach. And our reading coach is here to help any of our students that come in that need a little extra something in reading. Sometimes it might be a challenge um, in reading, and sometimes it might just be a, someone who is struggling just a little bit in reading and needs a little extra something. So our library is kind of a place for everything. Here I am in our amazing STEM lab, which was created a few years ago when our kindergarten through fifth grade teachers were looking for a place to do great science experiments. Unfortunately, they were trying to do it in their classrooms and they didn't have the materials, they didn't have the correct workspace, so we created a STEM lab. We had a company come in and in these cabinets all through the room, there's everything you can possibly imagine for cool science experiments. The next year we took it to the next level and we have a designated teacher preschool through second grade who comes into the STEM lab and teaches those children all sorts of wonderful things. You can see as you look around there's something for everybody in our STEM lab. This is our atrium. We have two amazing dedicated teachers who help out in the atrium and teach our children preschool through second grade. As you can see, everything in the atrium is on the smaller side. It's meant to be on the children's level. And this is where they learn catechesis of the Good Shepherd. On our ground level here at St. Francis, we have three preschool rooms, three kindergarten rooms, two first grade rooms, and two second grade rooms. Each kindergarten and preschool room have their own bathroom within the classroom so the children don't need to go outside the classroom. Each kindergarten and preschool room has their own full-time aide in addition to the regular classroom teacher. 
Our class sizes in kindergarten are three classes of 20. In first through fifth grade, they are typically two classes of 30. And then in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, we move to three classes of 25 to 27. our kindergarten. Our three kindergarten classes come out to the garden they've created. They plant seeds and, and with the hopes that in May when the mothers come for their Mother's Day presentation here, the children have something that they can pull from the garden as a treat for the We mothers. have three preschool rooms here at St. Francis. We have an amazing buddy program where our classrooms are paired with other grade levels and they do about four to five events throughout the year together. We have an incredible FaceTime program in the three preschool classroom where they FaceTime people all over the world and then they put it on a map to see all the cool places they've been. This is our preschool and kindergarten playground. This is where our preschoolers and kindergartners spend their recess in the morning and their recess at lunchtime. They have bicycles, they have a little track around the playground. It's a great space for them. We've just been able to take out all the sand and replace it with a great new surface. The remainder of the area, the blacktop, the turf, and the other play structure are used by our older kids, uh, first through eighth grade. We also use the St. Francis Xavier Athletic Fields. Uh, they are composed of a softball field, a baseball field, a picnic area, a snack bar, and restrooms. We use this area for PE classes, snack time, field days, all sorts of incredible events. This is the St. Francis Xavier Gymnasium. This is where we have all of our PE classes, this is where we have our after-school youth sports program. This is typically utilized as our cafeteria. We have a partition up on the ceiling that comes all the way down so that we can utilize half of the gym for our cafeteria and half of our gym for PE classes. Currently, we are not using this space for lunch as the kids are eating at designated areas outside. Uh, besides PE and our after-school youth sports program, we also utilize this area for a lot of great events. We have our community service Arupe project, which, ta which takes place in 7th and 8th grade in here. We have things like Breakfast with Santa, we have our Family Fun Fest, we have a stage over here which you can't see right now, but typically our stage is utilized for things like award ceremonies, and we have an eighth grade musical that takes place in the fall, which is a lot of fun. It's a great unifying experience for our eighth graders. And then additionally, in the spring, we have a musical where second through eighth graders are able to try out for parts in the musical. Um, they're really spectacular, great costumes, lots of fun, and amazing talent. In the junior high classrooms, we try and use a good balance of books and technology. Each student in junior high has a Chromebook that they utilize throughout the day. Our teachers use differential learning in the classroom to meet the individual needs of each student. We also have in our Spanish rooms, the children are broken out by beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And in our math group in eighth grade, they are broken out by level once again um, because we have an accelerated algebra program that takes place in eighth grade. Here I am in the junior high common area. This is a common area for our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. We have visitors come. This is their meeting space. Uh, the teachers use this carpeted area, which is exceptionally large, as extended learning space where the kids come out. They work with partners. They work with small groups. A teacher can even bring a whole class out here which is great. We're very lucky to have this space. We are the only Jesuit elementary school in the state of Arizona. And with that, we follow the, some of the principles of St. Ignatius of Loyola. 
One of those things that we do is we have five student learning expectations. They are religious, intellectually competent, loving, open to growth, and committed to justice. With regards to our student learning expectations or our SLEs as our students know them as, we uh, talk about those at Pledge and Prayer. We talk about those in the classroom. We talk about those when the children go over to Mass. Our SLEs are an exceptionally important part of being a Jesuit elementary school. In addition, we have some great overnight field trips that begin in our fifth grade. In fifth grade, they get to go up to, um, I'm sorry, fifth grade, they get to go to the Phoenix Zoo for an overnight. In sixth grade, they go up to Tonto Creek, which is in Payson, Arizona. Um, they stay in cabins, they do a lot of team building, nature walks, things like that. In seventh grade, they take a bus and then a boat, and then they head over to Catalina Island Marine Institute where they snorkel, they dissect squid. It's one of the favorite field trips. And then in eighth grade, we brought back a trip to Washington DC, which is really exciting because they're over there for about three nights, four days, and they pack everything in. They get to see everything there is to see in Washington DC. On the St. Francis Xavier campus, we're fortunate enough to have a campus counselor who's available to all the students, the staff, and the parents at any moment that they may need that. We have a campus minister. She's incredible. She helps with all the masses. She has a themed retreat for each grade level during the year, which is amazing. Um, we do go to mass once a month as an entire school over at the big church. The re remaining weeks, we go preschool through second, third through fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And those smaller masses are held over at Brophy Chapel. It's a more intimate setting and our priests are able to tailor their um, homilies to those specific grade levels, which is amazing. We also have an educational resource specialist, which we're very fortunate to have. She takes care of anybody in the school who needs any extra support, whether it be reading, math, let's say they need speech and we don't have those services on campus, she will help find the resources for the parents. She helps facilitate any service providers that may come on campus. And she also heads up our inclusion program. We are an inclusive campus here at St. Francis, which means that on campus we do have some students with special needs. And so our educational resource specialist um, heads that up and helps with all of our students on campus with any special needs. Here I am in our third through eighth grade upper science lab. It's a great space. The teachers have worked tirelessly to make sure everything's incredibly organized and that these guys can come up here and they can get their materials easily and dig into some really spectacular science experiments. It's such a great space that we're so lucky to have. So we have this upper lab and we have the lower STEM lab, which I showed you earlier. We are also fortunate enough to offer an electives program. So in kindergarten through fifth grade, the kindergartners go to art, they go to PE, they go to music, they go to all their typical specials. In sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, we have an electives pro program. So each trimester, there's about 11 to 12 special classes that are offered, everything from coding, to restaurant management, to jewelry making, to um, dissection, to the science of baseball. Um, there's something for everybody and it changes each trimester. And so the sixth, seventh and eighth grade students are fortunate enough to have two PE blocks, two Spanish blocks, and then they have two electives that they choose per trimester. It goes in order of eighth grade having priority, seventh and sixth. And so the kids prioritize which electives they have interest in. I'm up on our amazing balcony space, which as I mentioned before, we utilize the carpeted area in the junior high commons for extended learning space. Our balcony, which is beautiful, we use as well for extended learning space. In other words, the teachers have the children come out here during snack or they have them work in partners or small groups out on the balcony when the weather's nice. One thing I'd like to speak to is a huge component of St. Francis is our community service. It's exceptionally important to us. 
We do things like the fourth graders bake pies and they deliver them to St. Vincent de Paul. Um, as a whole group, we do things like Socktober where we collect socks for the homeless in Phoenix. We do hurricane relief collections, all sorts of fun things. And then in seventh and eighth grade, we have a very big project. It's called our Arupe project, where our seventh graders actually create goods that they sell at a market that's held down in our gymnasium. And they pick the charity of their choice, they sell their goods, and then they are able to go buy items for that charity. In eighth grade, it turns to them actually putting on their own event, like a pancake breakfast or a movie night at their home, trying to draw in outside members of the St. Francis community um, to help donate to the charity again of their choice. It's a huge piece of who we are, community service. It's committed to doing justice. Um, there's so much more we do that I'm not touching on, but I need you to know that's very important. Another Jesuit principle that we have and we live by is what's called cura personalis, which means care of the entire person. So we have a group that is composed of our educational resource specialist, our campus minister, our campus counselor, the principal, our two nurses, and our head of cura personalis. They meet, there's our bell, they meet once a week and if a student is having any type of struggle, um, something that needs to be addressed to include their family because Cure Personnelis means the entire person, which includes the student's family. Cure Personnelis meets once a week and they address those issues. They come up with solutions because it's not just the student's teacher. It's when a child comes in, we are here to educate their mind, body, and spirit as a whole group together. Here I am in my favorite place, the nurse's office. We have two amazing nurses, they're tag team. They're also part of our current personalist group that meets once a week, who I was just speaking about. But this is our nurse's office. This is where the students come. If they need any assistance from our nurses, if they're not feeling well, we have a special e exit back here, a special parking space so that the parents can just drive up and take their kiddos home. This is our music room. You can see if you look around the music room, it's got special padding for the acoustics. It's got the piano, we have multiple instruments. Apparently now you can play iPad, so we do that as well. Um, this is where our children kindergarten through fifth grade come in to, to learn about music. This would also be a place utilized for our electives. Any music electives, music-based electives would take place in here as well. And now we enter our art room where our kindergarten through fifth graders come to participate in art class and any art-based electives take place in here as well. I always end my tours at in our front office, which I feel is the heart of the school. Everybody comes in the front office, they come out the front office. Sharon Patson is our amazing front office manager. She takes care of anything that the parents need, the students need anything. Our pastor is Father Robert Van Brady, and our principal is Ryan Watson. Ryan is just beginning his second year here at St. Francis. He's been an amazing addition to St. Francis. He's got a lot of energy. He has a very um, huge passion for the students, the parents, the community at St. Francis. We are exceptionally lucky to have Mr. Watson on board. Thank you so much for joining us on our virtual tour. And thank you for your interest in St. Francis Xavier Jesuit School, where we're constantly working our hardest to build it up in the name of our Lord, living out our Jesuit mission of being intellectually competent, open to growth, loving, religious, and committed to doing justice. We hope to see you again soon.